Hey, it's Jeremy Hubbard in the back seat of a Tuk Tuk in Siem Reap, Cambodia, and I've got just about five hours to spend in this amazing historic city, one of the coolest in all of Southeast Asia. And I've got to figure out the top five things to do here, and I'm going to show you what they are in this episode of Window Seat. When we say Cambodia is on fire, it is so hot. We mean it in more ways than one. <sighs> What they've done here is no small feat. They've managed to attract tourists from all over the world, but keep prices down. Four-star hotels for 30-some bucks a night, our own private guide for 20 bucks a day, oh, okay. beers on one of the craziest party streets in all of Asia for about a buck a bottle, Got it. and close proximity to one of the marvels of the world, Angkor Wat, the temple that dates back a thousand years and draws millions from all over the world. Hello. I couldn't wait to get to Cambodia, even though I knew my time here was going to be short. Just landed at the newest airport in the world. It literally opened two days before I got here. The journey started with a quick flight in from Singapore, landing at the brand new Siem Reap Anchor International Airport, an oasis in the middle of cashew groves and rice fields about an hour outside of Siem Reap. The airport just opened back in October. It's beautiful and pays great tribute to the customs and cultures of Cambodia. The whole place centered around this four-faced golden statue. We have the whole backstory on this statue and a complete tour of this brand new billion dollar airport paid for by the Chinese government in another episode of Window Seat. We have a link in the description or you can click right there in the upper right corner of this video and it'll take you right there. How long does it take to get there? About one hour. Ooh, okay, very good. <laughs> You're your driver. You're my driver? Okay. <laughs> After exiting the airport, I meet up with the coolest guy I met in Cambodia, my cab driver, Sat Duong. I'm from United States. Nice to meet you. Welcome yeah. to Cambodia. Thank you. Yeah. We used the hour-long drive into town to chat about the country he loves and its complicated past. Was your dad in the war? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Was my, he injured? My, my mom and my, my dad? Yeah. Yes, see, they, they're still alive now. His parents' lives were upended by a bloody war that brought the Khmer Rouge, a radical communist movement, to power. What followed was a five-year civil war that left as many as two million Cambodians dead and left the countryside pocked with landmines. By some estimates, as many as six million landmines and other unexploded devices remain here. Sat's own brother was killed by a landmine when they were children. We hope we can have uh, more tourists come to Cambodia. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. The country is trying to move beyond its violent past and swing open the doors to tourists. And that's why they built the new airport. And that's why they're now fully welcoming visitors from the world over to visit Angkor Wat. Okay. We're good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank, you, my man. Thank you, my man. Thank you. Appreciate it. God bless the USA. <laughs> Which, by the way, is the very first thing on our list of the five must-do activities when visiting Siem Reap. It's kind of crazy because I just assume there'd be tourists everywhere. Maybe it's the time of day I'm visiting, early afternoon, uh, after the rush that comes here to watch the sunrise. I don't know, but literally, I'm the only person around for as far as I can see. The temple complex near the city was built in the 12th century and at 400 acres is the largest religious structure in the world. I mean it when I say this is truly one of the most magnificent things I've ever seen in my entire life. From here, kings ruled one of the most successful kingdoms in the history of this part of the world. It took three decades to build this place, and today tourists flock here for the unforgettable backdrops you see plastered all over Instagram. I know this place is crazy on Instagram. I know it's gone worldwide because of social media, but it still feels untouched. You will still feel alone when you're out here exploring these ancient ruins, and you're going to have an amazing time. If it all looks familiar, that's because Laura Croft Tomb Raider was filmed at a nearby temple. We're going to have an entire episode devoted entirely to Angkor Wat and what they won't tell you about visiting here in the coming weeks right here on Window Seats. So go ahead and hit subscribe and you'll know right away when that video is posted. Now to the rest of that list. My time in Siem Reap is short. I only have a few hours and I have no idea where to go. Uh, my name Van Rotan. Thank goodness I've got Rotan by my side. I like Siem Reap because it's a good place for very popular population for the people visiting and there is a good civilization and a good culture. He is the perfect tour guide because he's from here and he can't help but spread the word about this town of a quarter million people. His recommendation for the next stop here? So we are at National Museum in Cambodia, Siem Reap. 
The Anchor National Museum takes visitors back in time through the rise of the Khmer civilization. Got a bit of a Guggenheim feel as you start to walk up the uh, spiral ramp to the top of the museum. They say there's more than a thousand treasures in here, uh, dating back thousands of years, showing the history of Cambodia, and we're gonna take a look. What's striking are the beautiful grounds that house the ancient treasures of this country. At the center of it all, this calm reflecting pool that puts you in the right frame of mind for absorbing all this place has to offer. Which includes this very cool scale model of the Angkor Wat temple grounds and a level of access to artifacts that's almost unnerving. They're not behind glass really, they're not protected, you can just touch them if you wanted to. There are signs saying don't do that and I think hopefully most people abide. I mean these are uh, Buddhist sort of relics, so it's important to live by the rules that Buddha did, and that would probably include not desecrating religious artifacts. My favorite part of the museum was the Thousand Buddha Gallery. They've collected a thousand Buddha statues and relics covering centuries, different styles of art, different postures, different materials, each of them beautiful and memorable and glimmering. If you want to feel Zen, this is the room for you. A ticket to the National Museum costs about 11 bucks US. Not bad at all. It's truly a beautiful place and a great way to soak in the local culture in a short period of time. As night starts to fall on Siem Reap, I realize I gotta get moving if I'm gonna get through my list of the top five things to see and do in this amazing town. So, back on the tuk-tuk we go. Through the crowded streets, past the busy market stalls, and straight to one of the most unusual and unforgettable circuses I've ever seen. The fair circus is in the Guinness Book of World Records for having performed the longest circus ever, just over 24 hours nonstop back in 2021. On this night, I only get an hour or so, but I'll remember it for much longer than that. Hard to describe the Cambodian circus, except to say it's a little like Cirque du Soleil. Seated in a small tent, a crowd of a couple hundred cheers on the performers who use theater, music, and dance to tell the story of Cambodia's history. There's fire and aerial acrobatics, and every moment is dazzling to the eyes. Tickets to the fair circus cost about 38 bucks US, which is steep considering the inexpensive price of everything else in this country. But the circus company uses that money to help lift performers out of poverty and help them launch a career in the performing arts. In fact, they even take their show on the road. They performed in Montreal and New York in late 2023, and they plan to share their gifts with even more of the world soon. Take my word for it, if you've got the time, make your way to the Fair Circus in Siem Reap. You'll be talking about it for a long time after you leave. We'll put a link in the description so you can learn more and get your tickets ahead of time because it is always a full house. Let's keep moving now and it's a good thing that it's dark because believe me, nighttime is the right time in Cambodia. Seems like towns like this really come alive at night because it's so hot during the day. I think a lot of people just stay inside. So nighttime really is the time to get out and explore, see your friends, be social. And uh, man, does this place come alive after dark. And there's one street in particular that really comes alive after dark. Amid the glow of bright lights and pulsating music, you can see the sign off in the distance, both welcoming you and warning you that you've reached what's been called the number one party street in all of Asia. All right, the next stop is an absolute given. If you're coming to Siem Reap, you've got to stick around for the nightlife, and there's no better place for it than Hub Street. And this place is crazy. It is the center of action in Siem Reap after the sun goes down. Want fish to eat the dead skin off your feet? Want a cheap drink? Want a blinding light show as you dance the night away? This is your place. My tour guide, Ratan, told me all about Pub Street. Yeah, it's Pub Street very popular for the people, the tourists, and they walk and drinking. They have uh, hip hop, have discotheque and music, and they walk and crazy hour and happy hour, drink, drunk, and walk past you. Many people, it's crazy. <laughs> crazy is an understatement. Yeah, I was here for all of about five seconds before being offered uh, a woman. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can get pretty much anything you want on this street. It certainly seems pretty decadent, but uh, 
you know, what do you do? We can joke, but the reality is human trafficking here along Pub Street is very real. I was repeatedly approached by men asking if I wanted a prostitute, and it left me with the clear impression that if not the number one thing Western men come to the street seeking, it's got to be close to the top. The sex trade is a reality in Cambodia, and it's something the country will have to come to grips with and crack down on and enforce laws against if it continues to want to welcome tourists from all over the world, at least if it wants the right tourists to come here for the right reasons. I came to Pub Street not for any of that, but for a quick meal, a cheap beer, and to take in the sights. And it was fun to see so many people having such a great time, even on a slow weeknight. There's just something about Asia. If you've been here, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The people, the cities, the neighborhoods, the markets, the food, the drinks. There's no place in the world like this region. And every time I get the opportunity to come back, I take it. You should too. But no trip to Asia, no trip to Cambodia, no trip to Siem Reap would be complete without exploring the wares of this magnificent part of the world. Next on the list, you gotta hit up a market in Siem Reap, whether that's the old market during the day in the middle of town right near a pub street, or if it's the night market, one of several night markets around town where you can get anything you want. If you want a souvenir, if you want food, you got it right here in Siem Reap, and it's at a good price, and there's a lot of bargaining to be done. From Fair Trade Market to Made in Cambodia Market to Siem Reap Night Market right here along the river, there's no shortage of places to buy bags, silk, souvenirs, crocodile leather, wallets, purses, toys, get a massage or get something to eat. The night markets usually stay open until 11 or midnight and you can easily get to one of these from your hotel anywhere in town for just a buck or two on a tuk-tuk. You cannot come to Cambodia without visiting one of these places. <music> As midnight falls on this amazing city and I ride off into the glow of bright lights and flashing signs, I realize my time is running out. And my biggest regret is not having more time here to explore. But hopefully this video encourages you to plan a trip here. In Cambodia, it's uh, too easy to 100 percent for for the people who have job and earn money for their family. And if you're lucky, maybe you'll run into Ratan, who's so proud of his hometown and really wants you to love it too. To know about the real living in Cambodia, the real Cambodian, and uh, everything more. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'll put his contact information in the video description below so you can arrange a tour with him. Believe me, you'll love it. He's wonderful, and you are going to have a great time. Are you free this afternoon? And if you need a ride tour from the airport, please reach out to my friend Sat Duom. He is such a great guy. He's trying to make a living and build a future here with his wife in Cambodia, and he could always use the business. I can drive a taxi. Yeah. And believe me, you will consider him a friend by the time you say goodbye. I'll put his contact information in the description below too. Please look him up if you're coming here. <music> to a place that captured both our heart and our curiosity in the short time we had here. So there you have it, the top five things to do in Siem Reap, Cambodia, one of the most historic cities in all of Southeast Asia with a lot of really great people and a lot of fun things to do as we just showed you the top five on our list. That's it for this episode of Window Seat from Siem Reap. I'm Jeremy Hubbard. We'll see you next time. And next time is next Friday morning and every Friday morning when we drop a brand new video from our travels all over the world. What did we miss in Cambodia? Let us know in the comments below. And if you'd be so kind, please hit like and share so we can explore the world together. And we'd love it if you hit subscribe too as we try to grow our community of explorers hell-bent on seeing every corner of the globe. We'll see you next time. In the meantime, please enjoy one of these other videos from Window Seat.